I'm Peter Friedman. I inherited the tapes from Tom and completed Silver Lake Life 10 years ago. I'm sitting here with a person who filmed additional footage after my last interview with Mark. And that's you, Blake Mays. <laughs> well, I got to know Tom and Mark because we were teaching together, and Mark was actually my photo student. During the making of Silver Lake Life, I visited Tom and Mark several times, and helped me make the film as Tom became more ill. After Tom died, I went back to Los Angeles uh, to see Mark several times. The idea of just spontaneously recording things was kind of part of our lives in general, and uh, any one of us would pick up a camera at any time and film something, so it, it just seemed to be a very natural thing to do. As I traveled around showing this film, I was asked over and over again two questions. What happened to Mark? And how did the film get made? So with Elaine's material, we have finally had a chance to incorporate that. Elaine's footage forms an epilogue to Silver Lake Life, which you'll see here for the first time. Well, I'm here at Mark's now. I'm in the living room of Mark's room. Now, let's see, 25 after 5. 25 after 5. This is my, uh, what would you call it, um, narcotics pill case. These are Percodan. The little white ones are straight morphine sulfate. These pretty ones here are, uh, are morphine time release. And this is silver, and I can't remember what that is. Whenever I'm in pain, I get, when I'm in pain too long, I get depressed, and then I get suicidal. That makes sense. This is to kill thrush in my mouth, and it tastes good. But this was about $68, and it only lasts two weeks, but by the time it's You're kidding. dead. That's a Dr. Man thing, or? No. Yeah, 
pot. I don't think so, dear. No. Uh, not when the MSG comes before the chicken. Okay, I'll put it back. Mark the shopper. Sunscreen. Sitting, he says that he enjoys sitting on the edge of the bed. He's feeling better. And he's looking actually pretty good. <laughs> Nothing that a little radiation brought him through, too. True. Did you hear this? Yeah. I had the stuff over my eyes so that my eyelids stopped swelling up. It won't work on the rest. I didn't see that footage in time to include it in some of that life. Well, this is the last time that I saw Mark. And I think it's about a month before he died. To me, the idea that we should continue this, and if we just paid attention, that we would end up with something that would be very important. I think in that footage that we're looking at there, I could just barely remember it. The camera was on it. Well, Mark has just died. He called me last night. Um, he sounded very far away and said he didn't know if he was going to make it. And I thought about flying there. Uh, I tried calling him, he wasn't home. I called Peter Friedman, I called Mary Davis, I left a message, and now I'm going to try somebody else. This is Elaine for Abraham. It's 5.53 p.m. and it's Thursday. Um, uh, I'm calling again because Mark uh, Massey has just died and I thought you should know. And also that uh, sending the money uh, would maybe uh, help pay for the cremation. And, uh, there's also a film there, uh, a print of Black Star, which uh, I don't know where it should go. So maybe you should give Ron a call if, uh, if you think Hampshire could take care of it, which maybe would be a really good idea. Houston and I decided we should go to Los Angeles and help sort out their affairs. Now, where's the 
car. Oh, so there's the garden. There's the garden. The garden's beautiful as usual. There's the garage being cleaned out. There's the dog. I'm just going through paperwork and um, bills to find out what's, um, what has to be paid and what doesn't. Had a long conversation with um, Peter yesterday. Oh, Tom. Yeah. From Paris? And I found Tom's will. Tom's. So you found Tom's, Tom's, Tom's will, will, is what you're saying? I found Tom's will. It gave very specific instructions about Silver Lake Line. It confirmed that Tom's intentions were to have Peter finish the family. Yeah. If my beloved friend Mark Massey does not survive me, to my friend Peter Friedman, uh, I give the device and bequeath all rights, title, and interest in the existing software and videotape that I am producing entitled Silver Lake Live. And yeah. Peter agreed to yeah, take I on know, the project. I know that. Now, Peter is, of course, developing his own mindset as to how this will work. And I gather from him that he is sort of pursuing it as a, dealing with it as an unfinished project and do, dealing with the, the that is this as the basis of it that this is was something that somebody tried to do and didn't have enough time left to do uh, so he's approaching the story from that point of view which is really not what tom was after well, he definitely should receive the yeah but i think stuff. he should have the material i mean it's all but i also think too. that um you do have to edit from what you've got. Oh, yeah. And, and there's certainly, Tom never finished all the tapes. No. And to the best of my knowledge, Mark never went out and took any of the things that were made. There's also the video that Mark took of Tom being dead. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff. I think that that should be sent to Peter. I mean, I really believe... Like, maybe it was sent to Peter. Maybe it was. I think it was. I mean, certainly part of the thing of anybody's intention of giving work like that is that um, Tom trusted Peter to do the best he could with it. And he must trust Peter's judgment and sensibility in terms of filmmaking and putting it together. Absolutely. To say, okay, to. this is who I'll turn it over to, and that's what he did. But I'm sure much more than he trusted Mark's yes. ability to do that. When I first started looking at the tapes, my first impulse was to look for clues as to what Tom would have done. So I was watching this material thinking, what did he, why did he shoot this? What was this supposed to be for? And it was so paralyzing that I was like, I said to kick his ghost out of the editing room and say, sorry, Tom, I just got to take the reins and yeah. do whatever I can and do whatever I want. And I'm going to honor you by making the best film I can. little person. Pardon me, I agree. I still would like to know what those brown bumps are that appeared on my upper arms. Three on my right bicep and one bigger on the inside of my left bicep. Tom says they're not KS. So, Bo, what did you just say about what we should do? Well, I think what? we should take one last look at everything and grab the things that jump out at us that we think are important. And then throw it away, basically, and not, you know, we don't have to take it home and put it in this box. Yeah. We don't have to own it and, and stuff. We just have to make sure that we've taken one last look and touched all his stuff and right. been in this house, and then that's, right. that makes sense. that's that. It just goes on and on and on. And on. Bo just had a great idea. 
He wants to take Mars Polaroids, toss them from an airplane, throw them over a cliff. Well, save them then, Bo, so we can do it. There are two big, there are two big notebooks here. Mark's contact sheets and negatives. And I don't want to throw them away, but I don't want to just stick them in my closet either. What do you think about it? I mean, he was a good fucking photographer. It's not fair to just throw them away like it was a hobby. All this like hoopla about Tom and we're just throwing Mark out. I'm not throwing Mark out. No, I am. I was. I was like, oh, look at him and throw him away. I just don't want to do that. So I'll take these back and call Sharon or something. Well, there's other stuff I got from Sharon right here. Okay. Bo's well, calling about the cure, the possible cure in Switzerland. I wanted to find out that it wasn't going to be something that would be toxic and make me worse. Well, contracted AIDS, and although he managed to write and publish two novels, uh, a couple of years later, Bo died of AIDS also. And it goes on and on and on, and it's, uh, it's not so visible, but in fact, it's just still present also. And the various drugs have helped people live longer, but people in other countries don't have access to those drugs, according to what the papers say. So it's still a huge problem, and it's a terrible, awful disease. It's awful. Both Elaine and I still have people who are close to us who are struggling with this disease, so we still feel the impact of it in our daily lives. And also, Mark and Tom thought of this, what they were doing as art, and uh, so did I, and so do I. And so I think it um, deserves to survive.